the party is actually liking me. You know, I'm an outsider. I'm an outsider. And historically, they don't love the outsiders. But I think they're starting to like me. Let's talk about whether or not that's true. Here with me now, our all-star panel, former Ohio State Senator Nina Turner, a Bernie Sanders supporter, Jeffrey Lord, CNN Republican commentator and Trump supporter, Congressman Javier Becerra, chairman of the House Democratic Caucus and a Hillary Clinton supporter, and Anna Navarro, CNN commentator, who is not a Donald Trump supporter, <laughs> but a Republican. Anna? Yes, ma'am. When are Republicans and are Republicans going to come around and start supporting Donald Trump? Is it going to happen? Well, look, I, I think some definitely are. There's, you know, I would tell you there's three factions. There's people who actually genuinely like Donald Trump, like Jeffrey Lord. There's those who have fallen in line, who think out of party loyalty to defend and protect the down-ballot candidates. They have got to support him. And you see different levels of support. I mean, you know, he's pretty toxic, so some of them are, you know, embracing him. Some are air-kissing him. Some are just keeping him as far away as they can. And I think the third faction is the one that I'm in, which is no way, no hell, no chance will we ever support Donald Trump. I was just at the Romney uh, retreat last weekend, and I can tell you all three factions were there, and it felt like a Thanksgiving dinner with the most dysfunctional of families. I mean, you know, you, you thought you were going to get stabbed with a fork at some point. It is a very heated emotionally charged, difficult, gut-wrenching decision for so many Republicans. And, and Jeffrey, you uh, Lord, part of the uh, dysfunction, or at least the dif dysfunctional wing, if you're Donald Trump, is uh, going to come to the convention, and they're delegates, and they're right. not happy with, with Donald Trump. Listen to what one delegate said who was helping organize the Stop Trump movement at the convention. I am working daily on getting the votes, and I have a very good group of Rules Committee members. In fact, two called me right before this, and they have signed on. Now, I get how hard this is, right. uh, even if they are quite successful or, 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 they, or they're good at organizing. But this has got to concern Trump supporters in the campaign. Dana, they don't have a horse, as it were. The last time something like this was even remotely close was June of 1964, when Nelson Rockefeller had flamed out and the moderates rebelling against Barry Goldwater pushed then-Governor of Pennsylvania Bill Scranton into the race. He got clobbered. They don't have a Bill Scranton, as it were. They don't have a Mitt Romney, a Jeb Bush, anybody here. So they've got a big problem. Secondly, if, if by chance they succeeded, I mean, there would be an open rebellion right on down the ballot from all these millions of people who voted for Donald Trump who would say, OK, if that's what you're going to do, then let's go there. And I won't vote for my Republican senator or congressman. They'll make Javier Speaker of the House if he's not vice president. I mean, you know, it will be a, it will be a problem. Now, I know you guys are probably popping the popcorn on the Democratic side ahead of the, uh, the Republican convention. But, you know, Hillary Clinton's unfavorable ratings are not great either. But, Dana, there's a difference between getting to know the Democratic nominee, presumptive nominee, versus having someone who's your presumptive nominee who's just unfit to be president of the United States. Every day brings more evidence that Donald Trump is just not ready to be in the White House. And more and more people are saying it. Ana Navarro just said it very, very well. And that's his difficulty. Somehow he has to show that uh, it, we want someone in the White House who praises Vladimir Putin. I think we would prefer to have someone who greenlights going after Osama bin Laden. Here's a guy who says he's for the assault weapon ban. Oh, but now he's got the endorsement of the gun lobby, so now he's against an assault weapon ban. We want someone who's consistent. Hillary Clinton has been consistent. She's ready to be commander. And, and, and I know that I, though this, this issue about we're getting to know the Democratic nominee, I mean, we've known her for 30 years. You know, we've known her. She's been in the public light for a long, long time. And the truth is that I think a lot of people, a lot of Americans feel that we have to make the lesser of the bad choice. But let me and ask you say, about that. It's let a me, difficult choice. But let me ba go back to what you said about uh, being at the Romney retreat, which happens uh, every year in Utah. It brings a whole bunch of donors and others in. To Jeffrey's point, yeah, there might be a lot of people who aren't thrilled with Donald Trump, but you can't replace somebody with nobody. Was there any talk of an alternative, maybe Mitt Romney wanting to jump in again? You know, I, I, I mean, at this point, it would just be a, an impossible mission, right? It's really too late, even for a Mitt Romney, who does have 
the ability to raise money and who has a veteran so network. So you think that the, from I think your there's a will, but I think there's him. not a way. And, you look, think and, you're stuck and with I think Jeffrey's Trump. right. I think that if we try to have a coup in Cleveland, we're going to get slaughtered in Cleveland. So you've got two choices. You've got, you know, do we get slaughtered in Cleveland in, in no. July or do we get slaughtered in uh, November uh, across the nation? It is a bleak scenario for Republicans. What I do think is going to happen, and what I did sense out of the Romney retreat, is that there's a willingness to come together for there to be a Republican reconstruction. And I think Mitt Romney is going to be one of those leaders, as is Paul Ryan, whether it's in November, whether it's in four years or eight years, there is going to be a post-Trump reconstruction and coming together of the Republican Party, much like the Democrats had a few days. Nina, Nina Turner, let me, br let me bring you in here. One of the things that Donald Trump did for a while to try to court Bernie Sanders supporters. Do you see at this point them going over now that we know that it's going to be Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump? Well, I mean, I can't predict. I mean, there is a lot of, you know, Bernie or bust out there, whether or not the, the, the most uh, intense Sanders supporters will go that way, I don't know. But it is a possibility that people will skip that category. I've heard a lot of that as I've traveled the country, um, that the two choices are not acceptable, and especially for those who are fervently on the side of Senator Bernie Sanders. That could happen. We cannot afford, Democrats cannot afford to take any vote for granted or any segment of the Democratic Party for granted. And in a lot of ways, Dana, some of the people who are energized by Senator Bernie Sanders do not have a loyalty to the Democratic Party as mm -hmm. it stands. And so we have to recognize those people and try to do something to pull them over. So do you think, what do you think the end game is for Bernie Sanders? Do you think he's going to... Does well, he have a potential third party run in him? I mean, he's going to do what he said he was going to do. He gave an address on Thursday. He's going to take, you know, we understand the math is not on our side. We're not delusional about that, but the social study still is. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to go to that convention and fight for the most progressive platform that we can get. And then not just the platform. People are in the mood for show now. They're tired of the tale. But he's going to continue to use his cachet to do just what he said. I know it's not popular for politicians to mean what they say and say what they mean, but Senator Sanders has been a man of his absolute word. He will continue to do that. All right. I just want you all to listen to what Elizabeth Warren, the senator from Massachusetts, said. She was speaking uh, at, in New Hampshire at uh, the state Democratic Party meeting there. Take a listen. She keeps at it. She keeps fighting for democratic values and fighting to take down an army of right-wing lunatics who will say and do anything to undermine reform in this country. She's really becoming an incredible attack dog for Hillary Clinton. It kind of maybe surprising in that she didn't endorse her until the very end. Could she be a good pick, a VP pick? I, well, you know, I, look, I, th I think that if one of Hillary Clinton's goals is to be able to pick off some of these more moderate Republicans who are, uh, you know, having this existentialist moment, and Elizabeth Warren would kill any chance of that ever happening. I do think that it's, uh, it's refreshing to hear Elizabeth Warren because what we hear from Hillary Clinton tends to be so guarded, so scripted, so boring. And so all of a sudden, you've got somebody that's being, you know, she, I mean, it's like, Elizabeth Warren is channeling Hillary Clinton unplugged, unfiltered. And she's saying the things yep. that I suspect Hillary Clinton wishes she could say, but can't bring herself to. I I'm guessing you've got some attack dog in you. Tell me, tell me where the, the vetting process is for you. You know, know you're on the list. Lot of <laughs> yeah. He's got are a you, hell of a lot of attack dog you, in you know, him. In all seriousness, are you, being, are you being vetted? I have algo. Thank you. That's, uh, look at the, <laughs> thank you. Happy. Happy Father's Day is uh, to your father as well. I, uh, to my knowledge, I don't. I, I can't tell you. I know. I uh, I know that I, I'm in constant communication with the campaign on a number of me, uh, mm. items, but I can't tell you. I know where they are on this vetting. Process. It, sounds like get, it sounds like a potential yes, but I'll but I'll let you I'll let you go on that. I'll I'm, let you I'm go. But I do agree with uh, with Anna that I, Secretary Clinton is certainly measured. Okay. We got to leave it there. Oh. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate happy it. And Father's happy Father's Day. Day. Happy Father's Day.